Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Michael. Um, we are about to start our class on introduction to literature in English. Thank you and welcome. Um, okay. So um, on the 10th day of August, um, maybe 20 years ago, um, a boy was born at Waterside Hospital, Onisha. Uh, as he grew up, he had different aspirations. Um, at some point, he wanted to be Michael Jackson. At some point, he wanted to be a doctor. At some point, he wanted to be a writer. At some point, he wanted to be a lawyer. Whichever he became, like, it's not part of this story, but that person went through more than 20 years to become who he is today. And that person's life is a story. We'll be talking about literature today, and it is my hope that at the end of this class, you will have a better understanding of what literature is and um, what the subject with literature in English is really about. So what's literature? Literature is a method of recording, preserving, and transmitting knowledge and entertainment. What this essentially means is that knowledge is a transient thing, and literature is a means of trying to capture that transient thing, keeping it in a form that is permanent and variable in the future. Literature deals with complex issues and ideas, encouraging readers to entertain new ways of thinking. Because literature usually is if someone else telling you a story or you're hearing the story or reading a story from a different aspect or from a different perspective, you tend to um, you tend to see things differently. You tend to be comfortable with stories or at least size of stories that you are not familiar with. In this way, literature presents us with things that we might find uncomfortable or things that we are quite unfamiliar with. Literature in this way tries to encourage readers to see things from a different light. It tries to encourage people to encourage, to entertain new ways of thinking, to see things very differently from what they already see now. For example, someone who has not encountered Igbo people before would have a certain idea or will come to have a certain idea about Igbo people when he or she reads um, Shinra Achebe's Things Fall Apart. It is because of this subject that literature is prized or has a cherished place in amongst subjects taught in the secondary schools in Nigeria currently, because literature has this unique way of presenting you mindsets, presenting you, sto presenting you with stories that are quite sim dissimilar, but still similar to what you are familiar with. It is because of literature that you can read stories about Yoruba people, that you can read stories about Italians, that you can read stories about French people, and wrap it in such a way that you can tend to be understanding of their positions and their history. Now, given that the word literature is taken from the Latin word etheria, which literally means letter, literature has come to be restricted to art in written or readable format. Essentially, what this means is that even though literature can be uh, described to mean more than we are going to be discussing in this session today, the, the academic definition of literature has been restricted to uh, art in written form. Um, as you will see, art is a very wild subject. You have um, paintings, you have sculptures, you have um, uh, uh, um, music, you have drama, you have poetry, you have prose, you have uh, folklore. However, even though art uh, captures all of this, they cannot all be studied under the subject of literature in English for a basic reason. They are not captured in permanent form. Essentially, 
because we cannot all sit down under the same mango tree and listen to our grandmother talk about a, pet, a particular Toti story. And because not all of us come from the same ethnic region where we are familiar with a particular sing song or a folklore, we cannot study this under one umbrella. It is for this reason that literature is distinguished from other art forms, as we have explained um, prior to now. Literature as an art form can also include works in, not, in non fiction genres. Essentially, what this means is that although we are quite familiar with um, Trinia Trebe's Things Fall Apart, with uh, Chimamanda's Americana, with um, Walesho Inca's, um, which will in cast poems. These are not limitation. There's no limitation to what literature is when it comes to genre. Um, you can also have nonfiction books such as uh, Mac Manson's books on helping you to navigate life. You can have spiritual texts. Even the Bible is literature. Genres of literature. Now, the meaning of genre with respect to literature tends to depend on the context. As we come to see over time, um, the genre is used in a very versatile way when discussions are being had with literature. For example, prior to now, I had mentioned that uh, literature is not limited to fiction genre, that you can have non-fiction genre encompassed in literature. When I was using genre in that aspect, I was referring to a variant of literature. Additionally, when it comes to prose, you can describe prose dependent on its different genres. For example, you have um, mystery, you have thrillers, you have science fiction, you have fantasy, you have um, historical fiction, you have literary fiction, you have basically, the, 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 it's almost limitless from the way you can describe or classify um, prose on based on genre. Also, um, genre in literature tends to have a particularized meaning when you are talking about it in an academic setting. In this area, genre can be intertwined or be sometimes used uh, interchangeably with types of literature. Here, yeah, the types of literature or the genres are drama, prose, and poetry. So it is important that in the course of this discussion that we restrict ourselves to the understanding of genre as limited in this scope of work. Drama is literature primary intended for performance, usually on stage. So um, the defining characteristic of drama it, is that uh, it is meant to be performed, though it might be found in permanent or written form, this is merely a transcription of what is expected to be executed on stage by what we call actors. Now, this text that are usually in black and white is expected to be captured and then transmitted by the actors on a stage via live performance to an, an audience. Now, over time, technology has uh, modified things and given us more ways of exhibiting drama, which is why you can now watch um, movies on your cable TV, on your smartphones, on your laptops, which are basically drama in um, running on octane. Now, drama is really executed through dialogue and action. And the defining action, the defining element is that uh, um, you are supposed to see it in person almost literally see it in person. Now, the next type of the next type of literature or the next genre of literature is prose. Now, prose is identified as literature in the form of free verse storytelling, in free verse storytelling. Essentially, what this means is that whilst drama is expected to be executed on stage and is expected to take the form of dialogues being read out by different, at least two characters, prose on its own runs its course on its own. So you can pick up a novel and you can read one chapter running 10 pages 
and you are not expected to imagine a person voicing out one particular um, paragraph and another person voicing out another paragraph. Essentially, prose is imaginary in the sense that you are reading through texts, sentence after sentence, um, nearly um, imagining the, the text take form in your mind as it takes form or takes shape. Um, although sometimes um, prose works might be adapted for stage or might be executed in the form of a movie, but this is not its literal intention. Um, it is dif it's different from drama in this sense because uh, for you to now execute prose on stage, you will have to first of all adapt it to drama format, which is what is called screenplay. This is a different uh, conversation, but essentially most of the novel length works or prose works that have been adapted to um, drama or movies that we know of have to go through this process. For example, the Harry Potter series, all of them have to be adapted for screenplay before you can watch them in a form of a movie. Um, the Things for the Past movie we watched when we were younger had to be adapted through a screenplay before we could watch it in a movie. Essentially, because the work in itself is merely written to be read easily and not executed on stage, you will have to adapt it in the form of a drama for it to actually make sense to be put on screen or on stage. Now, the last type of, of literature or the genre of literature is poetry. Literature is intended to be sung, usually incorporating immense use of aesthetic qualities of language that are such as alliteration, rhythm, and time. Now, I am very sketchy about this definition because um, the, the definition of poetry can be very ambiguous, especially with regards to the fact that as time has continued to move on and as we, as civilizations, civilizations tend to expand, um, the definition of poetry comes to be more to be, be dependent on the culture being um, studied. For example, um, Whilst poetry from the ancient Greek or the Roman, the old ancient Romans will be very different from what you are receiving now in the form of music. Essentially, they are similar or exactly the same because um, both uh, illustrations are typically texts, words written down and then basically song you have to sing them out or you can imagine them being sung out. Um, although with, in modern times, technology has allowed us to now add musical accompaniment to these lyrics or to these texts that are written down, but the core features remain the same that poetry is written in verse format and is meant to be sung and uses the, um, the uses some literary elements such as um, alliterations to pass this message across. Now, the important thing is that all these three genres have their own elements and basic principles which distinguish them from each other. I have mentioned some, including the fact that drama is characterized by dialogue and action, prose is visually in free verse and runs its course. Poetry, however, is to be sung and uses aesthetic elements. However, even though they have their unique elements, they still have general elements that cut across all three genres. They also have basic principles that run across all three genres, and their core purpose is usually the same. Now, if I have been successful in explaining these three genres of literature, it is expected that you'll be able to identify which genre any art form you, you, you become up, you meet in the future can be easily identifiable to you. It is expected that when you read your Amanda's uh, popular discourse, you can easily identify that it is in prose format and clearly delineate why it is prose. It is expected that wh when you um, read um, The Girls Are Not to Blame, you understand why it is drama and the expectation of the author the playwrights at a point of writing it. This is, I hope that in the coming classes we can um, 
uh, we can explore some of the basic elements of literature and the basic principles together. Uh, literature in English and classification. Though we have a basic understanding of what literature is, uh, it is not essentially what we will be studying. As we highlight above, our course or the subject of, of study at this point is literature in English, and it is not exactly the same thing with literature. I am hoping that our understanding of literature is still fresh from my mind from the previous page, as we'll be using that in diving further into understanding what literature in English is. Now, literature can be can be in different forms and can be tied to different cultures. It can be in different languages. There are folklores in Yoruba, drama in Igbo, and songs in native dialects that tell stories, but will not be captured under this subject. This is essentially because focus remains on the literature in English language for several reasons. Um, so essentially, because uh, literature, as we have explained, is generally at in written form. You have art from Igbo people, you have art from our stars, you have art originating from the Yorubas, you have art from Italian, you have art from the Australians, you have art from the Japanese, from the Chinese. Each culture basically has ways of capturing its history and um, putting this in permanent written form to be passed down to generations. It is uh, based on this principle that uh, the ancient Egyptians found a way to uh, invent hieroglyphics. It is on this basis that Ch ancient Chinese people find a way to write so that they can transfer the knowledge and the history that they have garnered over time to their descendants. It is on this basis that several cultures in Africa tend to use oral history to pass down their story even though they were not able to invent a permanent form of keeping these works, these written works, these uh, vocal works down, they found inventive ways of passing the story along time to time from one generation to the other. And I must also mention that even though some cultures in Africa did not invent um, ways of writing down their history or ways of writing down their literature in quotes, they also found ways of exploring this uh, history and culture in on written um, forms, which is why you have artworks in the form of the ebook bronze pot. You have several knock arts. So you have the Benin bronze um, face mask. These are ways that cultures found to explore their history, found to um, uh, uh, pass down something from one generation to the other. However, coming back to the concept at hand, because literature is not fixed in one location, because literature is not fixed in English, literature is transient and comes from different cultures. Uh, um, you will have literature from in Igbo language, you have literature in Yoruba language, you have literature in Aosa, and several other, as many languages as there are. Um, uh, um, I, I remember when I was young that there are songs that they, there's a song they used to sing when the baby is crying, you, when the baby is crying, you hear what So even this, even though this song is an Igbo, it is, uh, eventually when somebody puts this down in Igbo, it became Written literature, it became written art, which made it future. But we will not be studying this song under this subject because it is not in English. The focus of this subject is going to be uh, written in English so that you can tend to understand um, the difference between literature and diction in English. However, I must point out that um, the general idea and principles applies to literature in other languages, even though the course of study is literature in English. English. So essentially, uh, even though um, most of the poems you'll be reading in the course of this subject will be written in English, even though the drama will be reading is in English, even though the prose works will be reading will be in English, it doesn't delineate from, doesn't debate on the fact that um, 
some of the core principles or some of the core ideas you'll be getting from this subject applies across board to different cultures, to different languages, as you come to um, find. I hope uh, um, we we'll come to understand that this is why even when um, an author's work is translated to other languages, it still has its meaning. It's still literature in the sense that it has value to the readers. It still has value to persons who come across it. Even the author who, whose work has been translated still gets to read the benefits from such an art form, even though it is not in English. So yes, um, the idea that uh, alliteration is a poetry device used to apply to Yoruba songs. The idea that there is rhythm and time in poems to apply to Igbo songs. However, our focus in the course of this work or because of this subject would be on English works. Now, I hope that I've identified some of the reasons why our focus in this subject will be in English language. Um, one of it is that it is universal. Um, although we'll be exploring African and non-African works, uh, all of the African works we'll be exploring are merely works written by Africans, but in English. All of the works we'll be reading are not necessarily from English speaking, not necessarily from English people from England, but it will be in English. Also, um, I need to point out that even though you might come to find that the, the phrase English literature is slightly different from what you might be thinking of literature in English at this point, um, they are essentially the same um, uh, in common academia. So what I mean is that even though in Nigerian textbooks, you might find the distinction between English literature and literature in English. Essentially, when you are doing your research online, they are basically the same. I will say this because I've noted that at some point when conversations are being had on, on literature, people tend to define English literature as um, literally works that come from England or the United Kingdom. And I find this very restrictive because um, even though, even people who studied uh, English literature in um, higher education, they tend to study works from uh, different cultures and different countries, even Russia, which is the native English speaking country. So yes, please uh, bear in mind that in the course of our discussion, in the course of your reading, that um, literature in English might be used in a different way from um, English literature. So it is um, a good idea to have a firm grasp of what each phrase does literature, literature in English and then English literature means. So what is the study of literature in English? It involves the reading and analyzing of materials on the trained genres of literature written in English language. I believe that this much has been alluded to in the course of my discussion, because um, over the next few weeks, as you go on this journey, as you prepare for your next exam, you'll be reading works that cut across the three genres of literature, which is drama, prose, and poetry. However, the the goal is not just for you to read through them and, and um, just read through and read through. It is, uh, it is expected that you analyze the information you are receiving from the text and you tend, you come to form ideas or perceptions and uh, maybe agree or disagree with also on some of the things they have written down. Now, this analysis will take different form as you might come to explore subjects such as theme, the motifs, the use of literal elements, but it is important to know that it is expected that in the course of reading these works, you are to analyze the information being received from the poems, the drama, and the prose, regardless of whether they are African or non-African, regardless of whether you relate to them or you don't relate to them. Um, the other thing that is um, expected in the course of studying literature in English is that um, it involves reading and writing clearly, concisely and analytically in a stylistically uh, different form. So essentially, um, uh, as I mentioned, you'll be exploring works, literary works from the three basic types of literature or the three genres of literature, the prose, the drama, and the poetry. 
And in this way, it is expected that you become versatile in the way that English is written, in the way that English, English is read, in the way that um, English sentences are constructed and the, on the understanding of what this text means. It is expected at the end of the writing this exam, you'll be better at um, writing generally, you'll be better at reading generally, and this ordinarily has benefits, which we'll explore subsequently because of this class. The next uh, point is that for the purposes of this examination, the syllabus is split between African and non-African literature. I believe I've touched on this, and it is a sweater that you have a firm grasp of both aspects of the course. That's non-African and then the African aspect. The other point is that the examination is to test your understanding of core elements, themes, and principles of future. Again, I believe I mentioned this earlier in saying that even though you are reading these works, they are not expected to just breeze through and pass through. The goal is that you analyze and understand them uh, well enough to identify the elements, the themes, the principles of literature that are utilized therein, including the motifs and um, the alliteration and stuff like that. You come to identify them in the course of the works you are reading. importance of studying literature. So um, one, the first importance is entertainment. I mean, at, at this point, if you do not enjoy reading, I would hope that you will come to enjoy reading at the end of the exercise, um, because reading has several benefits. And one of them is, is entertaining. Um, I cannot begin to explain the exhilaration or the excitement I feel when I read a very good book. Um, at the end of um, Harry Potter and the Deadly Hallows, I was practically jumping. At the end of Americana, I was seated. At the end of Sophia Taz, uh, A Good Thing Will Come, I didn't feel so good, but then it, the point is that I totally enjoyed the journey of reading. So it is expected that um, uh, it, 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 it should in English is important because it's entertaining. You read works from different cultures that should train you, that should excite you, and should endow your knowledge. Another importance of studying English literature or literature in English is that it improves your mastery of the English language. So in the course of this study, we come to encounter different texts. It is expected that you read enough to see the different ways that um, English was constructed. It is also expected that at the end of the ex exam, uh, before writing the exam, you will be better at writing English or reading English than you were beforehand. Um, this is because um, literature in English uh, affords you the, the, the unique opportunity of reading wide. You read so many texts, you read so many works, that you see different ways that English language is played with. You find that even though there are rules with, in English language, that those rules can be bent, and you find ways to bend those rules to make your English speaking and your English, in, uh, your writing, more professional to make it better and uh, more presentable. The next uh, importance is education. You will come to learn from the personal experience of the characters in the books you read, or the personal experience of the authors who are writing to you, as literature presents you with a unique opportunity of learning from the experience of others. Um, uh, I remember that uh, uh, there's this quote about how there are, there are different ways of learning. You can learn from your own experience, you can learn from the experience of others, or you can learn by uh, preparing prior to what is potentially going to happen. So literature is beneficial to you as it gives you the opportunity to explore things encountered by different other persons, example, which might include the authors, or which might include the characters they're reading, who the authors are using as a vessel to pass across a particular message. Um, the other thing is that it serves as a social education vehicle for cultural and historical information. In the course of literature, reading literature, you come to learn a lot about different cultures that you never knew about. In the course of reading books and or, or prose and drama and poems, you come to see things from different perspective. You come to see things differently from how it affects you as an individual to how it affects people as a society, to how it affects the other gender, to how it affects people from on the other side of the globe. It is also a vehicle for social enlightenment 
as it exposes you to different ideas and perspectives. Uh, so in the course of reading um, different novels and different drama, your idea or your perception about core social issues might change. Your perception about the female gender might change. Your idea about your, your goal or your, or your identity might change too. Uh, literature is also important because it helps you with emotions and empathy as in the course of reading you are, you might be driven to empathize with the characters and understand why what they're going to is a big deal. Um, what this actually does is that it prepares you for meeting other persons and seeing the way that what you do affects them too. It provides helpful information for other subjects and areas of study, including the English language itself and several other subjects, including social studies, um, uh, things you might encounter in your university education or things you're encountering at this point in time as you be reading biology, um, civic education, all of these things are touched on by the future. It opens the door for different career prospects as people who study or do well in English and English can end up being writers. You can become, a, become an author, you can become a poet, you can become a journalist. Um, it might lead you to become a screenwriter, a playwright. There are different career prospects for people who do well in English. It's not basically just passing away your time. It, 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 it gives people jobs, that is the point. And yes, I've come to, I'm coming to the close of the uh, end of this session, and I'll end with this remark, which I hope captures what we have done in the past 30 or so minutes. In that, Mama Nangozi Adichie said, I look to stories for consolation, a kind of small consolation that one needs to want to wake up every day, as templates for life, for news of how others live, for reminders that life's mysteries have no keys. Um, Thank you. I hope I've been able to introduce you to Nitran English and that our session here today will prepare you for the next class and to be open-minded to receive and understand Nitran English better than you did before now. And in preparation for your exams, perhaps Nitran in such a way that you become a master of it. Um, thank you. I believe I can. And the plus now. I don't know if I have a question. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. You can also share. Um, share this link with your friends. You can subscribe for more content like this. I hope that you found this um, interesting. There are, there are also materials on other subjects. So if you like this, please share, subscribe to the page and um, see you next time. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye.